Hello everyone and welcome to Dr. Otello's Sports Medicine Report. I am Dr. Donald Otello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. On today's episode, I'm going to speak about a postural fault called upper cross syndrome. You may see this written or you may hear it called upper crossed syndrome. It is exactly the same thing. I'm going to use the term upper cross syndrome throughout this video just to avoid confusion. Upper cross syndrome is a postural condition where the thoracic spine has curved forward, the shoulders have rolled forward. In most cases, the scapula, which is the shoulder blade, has moved away from the spine and the head is in a forward position. Usually in upper cross syndrome, all of these faults are there to a certain degree. And these faults occur due to someone being in a slouched position for too long. They could be on the cell phone, they could be on a computer, they could be watching TV and just be bent forward. They can also be reading a book. So many times when these postures are taken, a muscle strength imbalance occurs. And this strength imbalance is what creates the poor posture. The poor posture and the strength and balance become a vicious cycle where the poor posture creates a strength and balance and then the strength and balance makes the poor posture worse and that vicious cycle just continues and continues and continues. The vicious cycle which I mentioned of poor posture and strength and balances leads to improper motion. It can lead to pain and dysfunction. It can lead to chronic conditions. Some of these conditions are what is known as cervical genic headache, meaning that the source of a headache is coming from the neck. It can lead to neck pain, thoracic outlet syndrome, shoulder pain, especially a condition known as subacromial impingement syndrome, and many other conditions are also associated with this poor posture known as upper cross syndrome. The strength and balance that is present with upper cross syndrome is when the muscles in the chest, the anterior shoulder muscles, and the muscles in the rib cage are overpowering and inhibiting proper use of the muscles in the posterior shoulder, including the rotator cuff muscles and the scapular retractor muscles. These muscles get overpowered and are not functioning properly. The muscles in the front of the shoulder and the chest muscles, which are stronger in this condition, are usually the pectoralis major, the pectoralis minor, the latissimus dorsi, which attaches to the front part of the arm, and the teres major. Now the muscles in the back that are weaker and are being overpowered and inhibited by the anterior shoulder muscles are the scapular retractor muscles, which are the middle part of the trapezius, the lower part of the trapezius, the rhomboid minor and the rhomboid major, the rotator cuff muscles, the posterior rotator cuff muscles, which are the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus and the teres minor muscles, and also the rear head of the deltoid can be involved. Other muscles that are involved in upper cross syndrome, usually there is weakness in the deep neck flexor muscles and there is shortening of the levator scapula muscles. Now when you think about the muscles that I have just mentioned, not only these two muscles, but the muscles in the chest and the muscles in the anterior shoulder, how they are inhibiting and overpowering the muscles in the posterior shoulder and the muscles that retract the scapula. These are antagonistic muscles. They work opposite from each other. So a certain group becomes tight and strong and short and that inhibits the other muscles from working the way that they should. When we speak about muscles and their functionality, there are two basic types of muscles. There are tonic muscles and there are phasic muscles. The tonic muscles are more prone to be shortened. These are the muscles that I spoke about that become tight and become dominant. And then there are the muscles that are called phasic muscles. The phasic muscles are more likely to be muscles that are overpowered by the tonic muscles. Upper cross syndrome is a condition that is manageable, preventable, and you are able to recover from this condition. 
the things that you want to do is you want to correct your posture by strengthening the muscles that need to be strengthened, by stretching the muscles that need to be stretched, and improving your daily habits. Watching your posture and correcting your posture when you are sitting, standing, and laying down. When you are sitting, you want to make sure that you are in a proper posture. Continually check your posture. Straighten the thoracic spine. Push the cervical spine backwards into retraction and pull the shoulder blades backwards. You want to make sure that you are in a good posture. When you are working at the computer, take a short break every 15 or 20 minutes, stand up, do a quick stretch, and then return to your seated position in a good posture. So you want to be mindful of your posture and continually correct it throughout the day. And then with the stretching, you want to stretch the muscles that are tight. If the pectoralis major and the pectoralis minor are tight, stretch those muscles. All the different stretches that you can do for the chest muscles and for the anterior shoulder muscles will help a great deal in preventing this condition. And you want to strengthen the muscles that are overpowered, inhibited, and weak. This means strengthening the scapular retractor muscles, again, which are the rhomboid minor, rhomboid major, lower part of the trapezius and middle part of the trapezius. You want to strengthen the posterior deltoid. You want to strengthen the posterior rotator cuff muscles, which are the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. Whatever muscles you find are tight, you want to stretch those muscles at a variety of angles. You want to move into the stretch slowly. You want to hold a mild, comfortable stretch and then move out of the stretch slowly. Whichever muscles you find are weak, you want to strengthen those muscles. You can use concentric, eccentric, and isometric exercises to strengthen the muscles that are weak. Again, upper cross syndrome is a condition that is preventable. It is a condition that is manageable and you can recover from upper cross syndrome. Preventing upper cross syndrome, managing upper cross syndrome, and recovering from upper cross syndrome will lower your risk of the associated conditions that I mentioned before. Like I mentioned, the cervical genic headache, neck pain, thoracic spine pain, all of those conditions. And there's other ones too, thoracic outlet syndrome, uh, rib pain, rib subluxations. The potential of getting those conditions will be lessened if you eliminate upper cross syndrome. Another exercise that I did not speak about that is very important is strengthening the thoracic spine muscles that extend the thoracic spine and then doing mobility exercises for the thoracic spine and then also strengthening the deep neck flexors. You strengthen those by doing cervical retraction. Now I have videos on cervical retraction and stretching the chest muscles and strengthening the scapular retractor muscles and also strengthening the rotator cuff muscles. So those are all videos that I recommend that you watch. Everything goes hand in hand in correcting upper cross syndrome. Thank you very much for viewing today's episode of Dr. Rosello's Sports Medicine Report when I covered upper cross syndrome. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. You could go to my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you could learn more about the book and you could also see my blog. My blog has many articles about spine health, sports medicine, health in general, and fitness, and you could also see some of my videos. Thank you very much for viewing today's video. Please feel free to like this video. Also, please, if you have suggestions, feedback, or questions, leave them in the comments section below. You can subscribe to my YouTube page, Dr. Donald A. Ozello, DC. If you are watching this video, you are on my YouTube page, so please subscribe. I want to thank everybody for watching, and I want to remind you, train hard, train smart, get adequate rest between training sessions, utilize nutritional and supplementation strategies that work for you, stay injury free, 
and accomplish your 